Hey everybody, it's the Crypto Anarchist here, and I'm bringing you guys another video on cryptocurrencies. This one's not actually part two of uh, the whole um, why SegWit supporters don't understand what they're talking about video series. This one is actually on selfish mining, and the reason why I want to talk about selfish mining is I've been doing a lot of research into selfish mining recently, and my goodness, this needs to be talked about. This is a massive issue. Um, selfish mining, like most people don't understand selfish mining. The, the one thing I found about cryptocurrency users is they all like to lie to themselves and pretend like what they're using is completely secure and safe, and usually it's really it's, it's not. And don't don't you know, I'm not saying like don't buy cryptocurrencies. You know, I own a lot of cryptocurrency. Um, you know, I'm heavily invested in this. I'm trying to start businesses within it. So I'm I'm a big believer. But to pretend that it's secure right now, you know, it's really not. Um, and especially the Segwit coins, like any coin that uses Segwit, there's a method of selfish mining uh, that can easily easily destroy all Segwit coins. And so I'm going to go ahead and talk about that today. So. What is selfish mining? Because most of you guys probably don't know what it is. Well, selfish mining is a it's a form of mining where instead of uh, releasing blocks as soon as you find them, the miner holds onto the block in order to start working on the next block. Because when you're mining on a cryptocurrency, uh, you can't mine on the next block until someone has given you the... Um, the answer to the the previous block. So if you haven't found the solution to the previous block, you can't start mining on the next block. So a selfish miner, the way they operate is when they find the solution to a block, instead of giving it to everybody else, they keep it to themselves. And when they keep it to themselves, they can start mining on the next block. Now, there is a slight risk involved in doing this because if somebody else uh, finds uh, the block that the selfish miner has found, the selfish miner has to release their block at the same time. And uh, so then it's like a 50 50 chance who's going to win out now if you actually do the math uh the the problem here is even though there's a risk that hey you know if if the selfish miner finds a block there's only a 50 50 chance they'll win the block propagation um race it doesn't matter because uh, as long as the selfish miner is smaller than the honest miners, he's wasting more work of the honest miners than he will waste himself. So it's always more profitable for the selfish miner to continue selfish mining. Okay, it's always more profitable. So that, that's assuming that um, there's a majority of miners who are mining following the honest protocol. There's uh, there's actually a defense against this selfish mining, and the defense against selfish mining is for the honest miners to form their own cartels. And like I said before, because selfish mining is only more profitable if there are more honest miners than the selfish mining cartel, this means that the selfish mining cartel, uh, by definition, has to be smaller than the honest miners. So if the honest miners form up and form their own selfish cartels, then the uh, the honest miners who have formed their car cartel will be more profitable than the selfish miner, and so they can choke the selfish miner off the network just by doing what the selfish miner is doing and selfish mining themselves okay so this obviously like this is still a big threat to cryptocurrencies like this just right here even though there's a defense because if somebody does selfish mining you know obviously they'll lose a ton of money but so will the miners and it'll make the blockchain act really weird for a while because if everyone's selfish mining they're all holding on to their blocks that they found and just releasing them at a later point so you will you'll go through periods where you know you won't find blocks for hours or maybe even days and then you'll find tens or you know dozens of blocks all in a matter of seconds and so it'll be really weird um, now again the blockchain will still function it'll just be very weird and it would probably cause the price to crash um, so selfish mining is an issue but like I said the, de the defense is simple and because selfish mining you know it only really is more profitable when the selfish miner is smaller than the honest miners you, you don't really have a huge amount of things to worry about like yes it can happen but there's a defense against it now the big issue is when you involve SegWit because SegWit changes all of the incentives for uh, selfish mining um, so let's go ahead and talk about that so what does SegWit change well with SegWit uh, the selfish miner doesn't actually hide the blocks that they find okay so this completely changes how the selfish miner works so, because before the selfish miner you know they're doing all their stuff in the shadows they're doing it all hidden so there has to be collusion among all the members of the selfish miner like if they're running a mining pool all the members of the pool have to know what's going on they have to be in on it they have to know exactly what's happening okay however with SegWit the cartel doesn't actually hide their blocks they publish their blocks so um, they publish it just without signatures okay now the reason why they publish it without signatures is because the say what selfish mining attack you're not actually trying to get more blocks back 
faster. That's like an added bonus for this attack. So the, the full attack without Segwit is just to get more blocks faster and gain more money from mining. That's not actually the attack vector with the Segwit Selfish Mining attack. And I, I call the Segwit Selfish Mining attack the altruistic selfish mining attack. The reason why it's altruistic is because these the uh, Segwit Selfish Miner, they release the block publicly just without signatures. Now the reason why you release the block publicly is because the main the main avenue of your attack is just to get people to mine these blocks without signatures. So before where you know you have a block propagation race um, with uh, other miners, with this one as soon as another honest miner publishes their block you're not really having much of a block prop propagation uh, race because your block is already out there on the network. All you have to release is the signature data and the signature data it's it's pretty big part of the block but it's smaller than the block as a whole because you know the block is the signature data uh, or a SegWit block a valid SegWit block is the signature data plus the transaction data so the SegWit or the yeah the SegWit selfish mining cartel only has to race with the signature data against the uh, honest cartel so this means that the SegWit mining cartel is always more profitable um, and it will always win the block race more often than not. And now I don't know the exact percentage of the time that they will win this block race. And if you watch uh, Peter Risen, he's got a real good video on this. He actually says that the uh, Segwit mining cartel or the altruistic selfish miner can uh, lower the size of the signature data by pruning it. Um, and they can make it as small as possible. And if that is true, then the uh, honest cartels really don't have much of a chance whatsoever uh, to compete with this uh, altruistic selfish miner. So, you know, I don't know... Too much about how you prune the signature data, so I'm not really going to rely on that here. But no matter what, the selfish mining cartel, the altruistic selfish miner, is more profitable than the honest, honest cartels. Okay, and the other thing is too, they don't rely rely on collusion whatsoever. So anyone who is just a normal miner, like let's say you're a small time miner who doesn't mine in a pool, and uh, you know someone tries this altruistic selfish mining attack on Segwit coins, and uh, you don't really have a way to join into a, an honest cartel. So you're like, well shit, now what? Are, I'm just going to lose all my money with my uh, mining equipment because I can't even get into the honest cartel because it requires collusion, and maybe you just don't know the right people. You're just not in the right circumstance, well, anyone can join the uh, altruistic selfish miner because their blocks are published publicly. You know, it's only the miners who are doing selfish mining with signatures who cannot publish their blocks uh, publicly. The uh, the altruistic selfish miner publicly publishes their blocks, okay? And they do this, again, without signatures, so uh, most SegWit miners will not accept that as a valid block. However, again, as soon as the Honest Cartel or whatever, the Honest Miners release their block, the, the SegWit Cartel releases the signature, so it's a valid SegWit block. And then the, the real attack here, though, the real attack is once you hit 51% of miners who mine the blocks without signatures. Because, again, the most profitable cartel is the altruistic selfish miner. There's nothing honest miners can do about that because, again, the normal defense against a selfish mining attack is just to join your own selfish mining cartels. But you can't join a similar selfish mining cartel to the Segwit one because if you start mining on blocks without signatures, then once you hit 51% of miners who mine without signatures, whoever finds the block can forge transactions. Every transaction in that block can be moved to a new to a new address owned by the um, selfish mining cartel. Okay, so they can steal all transactions in that block. Now this is really bad, obviously. If someone can just forge transactions, this is really bad, especially considering that the most profitable way to mine is to join the Segwit mining cartel. So all the incentives are for joining the Segwit mining cartel. Now a lot of you guys might say, you know, hey, well this will just drop the price of that coin exponentially, so why would anyone do this? And I've talked about this before. The best way to attack, to attack a cryptocurrency is to attack the mining and then replace it with your own coin that is, uses the same mining algorithm. So what's another coin that uses the SHA-256 mining algorithm? It's really not that hard to figure out. It's Bitcoin Cash, okay? So this attack cannot be done to Bitcoin Cash, but Bitcoin Cash miners can do it to Bitcoin Segwit. So all that has to happen is some large owners of Bitcoin Cash, and just so you guys know, some of the biggest owners of Bitcoin Cash are the uh, biggest miners of Bitcoin Segwit. So like they could do this attack today. I don't know if they control 51% today, but they could do this attack today. Um, and if they did it, they could forge 
uh, transactions within that blockchain. It would take a while for some people to notice because when you send a transaction, you don't really think about it. You just assume it got sent there. You're not checking it. Um, so it would take a while, and these miners who forge these transactions might actually be able to, you know, exchange their coins for other coins on different cryptocurrency exchange markets, and. Um, if they do that again, this they're they're following the protocol too of this coin, so it's not it's not even clear whether this would be illegal because yes, they would be forging transactions, but they're following the protocol of the coin. This is not a hack. It's not even technically a, an attack. They're just following the protocol in a way that people don't want them to follow the protocol in. Um, so it should be completely legal. It'd be in a very gray area, and people wouldn't like it, but it should be completely legal. Um, and then if they do that, that once that this gets found out, then the price of that coin tanks, and then it has to get replaced by another. SHA-256 coin. So even though people would say, oh yeah, but if someone does this attack, it'll drop the price of the coin to basically zero, That that's kind of the point of the attack. Okay, so the, the SegWit mining cartel, or the altruistic mining cartel, they perform this attack, they steal a bunch of the Bitcoin, then they transfer it over into another coin before anybody notices, so then they've secured their profits, and then once everything's been found out, um, you know, once people have actually figured out that this theft has occurred, uh, the price of their original coin that they're doing the attack on, it drops to near zero, and then it just gets replaced by other coins that use the same mining algorithm. Okay, So that's how this attack works. That's exactly how this attack works, and it's a real big issue. And then a lot, another thing, like people think that uh, you know, if this attack happens, you will know immediately, but by removing the signatures from transactions, there's no data on the blockchain to prove that this has happened. So you can look at the blockchain, and you can't prove that anything went wrong. Um, so it, it, it really will take quite a long time it'll take it'll take more than hours it might even take days to prove that this attack actually occurred and if it took days to prove that this attack occurred you know that's a lot of time for one of these miners to get out all the uh, funds that they forged and sent to themselves it's really a lot of time so it can be easily done um, and so this is a big issue because this can be done on any segwit coin the other thing that you got to remember is people would say oh yeah but the Bitcoin hash rate so high and the miners in it right now are honest enough that they won't do it that's probably true you know Roger Veer and Jihan Wu probably won't do this they're really good guys they have really uh, they're, they're basically the backbones of cryptocurrency as much as people like to hate them and it's just the new age communists who are coming into cryptocurrencies that don't like it a bunch of left-wing SJWs that don't like Bitcoin cash um, everyone who I know who's an original adopter of Bitcoin prefers Bitcoin cash it's just the new age left-wing communists that don't but anyways um, Roger Veer, Jihan Wu they probably won't actually use this attack uh, so you, you don't have to worry about that, but there's always newcomers coming into the space, you know, so even if Roger Veer and Jihan Wu don't do it, it someone else might do it, and then if, if uh, even if this selfish miner only has 5% of the network hash rate, he's always more profitable, so Roger Veer and Jihan Wu might just look at that and be like, look, fuck it, we'll just join them just to end up killing off Bitcoin Segwit, because it's already dead anyways. As soon as this attack happens, the coin is basically dead, and there's no way to stop this attack for Bitcoin Segwit other than centralizing the network. There's nothing that can be done, which would, again, they've already removed basically everything that defined Bitcoin from Bitcoin Segwit, but if you have a centralized, trusted party running it, then it, you know, it's... It's it's definitely not Bitcoin, and I I almost think that if they centralized Bitcoin Segwit, people would still jump on the bandwagon because, like I said, it's a bunch of left-wing communists who really support it. And I'm not saying all of them are left-wing communists; just the people who are adamantly against Bitcoin Cash uh, are left-wing communists. Um, but but this is a big issue. And then there's one more thing that we got to talk about with uh, this attack, and that's the problems caused caused by small blocks. So. Um, the thing that really makes this attack super profitable is whether or not you can beat people in the propagation race. And like I said, for SegWit, you're not actually trying to propagate the entire block. It's just the signature data. So you're going to beat the uh, you're going to beat the other honest cartels, you know, most of the time. And then if you can prune the signature data and make it very small, uh, you, you're going to beat them, you know, almost all of the time. Uh, but the real issue comes with uh, the fact that Bitcoin SegWit is committed to small blocks. So you know how everybody says, "Oh, small blocks increase security because you have." more node validation, which is a retarded argument because, you know, lightning transactions are done off-chain, so you get no validation of transactions on the lightning network. So it's a retarded argument anyways. But the big issue is uh, small blocks make civil attacks much easier. So uh, one way to increase the block propagation of your of your block is to just to create a bunch of nodes on the network throughout the world and then propagate your block through all the nodes you personally own. And then that'll be the, uh, the other nodes who just randomly choose a block to propagate. And so the big issue is that when you have small blocks, these civil attacks where you just own 
you know thousands of nodes throughout the network uh, it only costs a few hundred dollars to you know set up these nodes I don't actually know how much of uh, how much it would cost to run a V or just to set up a VPS and run a bunch of uh, Bitcoin nodes throughout the network I mean you could probably do each node for like under fifty dollars um, so you know you could set up a few thousand for like fifty thousand um, dollars and that you know that would give you a shitload of percentage of all the blocks or all the nodes on the network so then if you own all those nodes you're gonna win propagation like all the time so again you know Bitcoin SegWit is perfectly designed to be attacked by this sort of an attack and this is terrifying because it's the most dangerous attack to any sort of cryptocurrency um, and Bitcoin SegWit has no defense for it and this this applies not only to Bitcoin SegWit but it applies to all coins that have SegWit activated so the one thing that I, I see you know People say that Bitcoin is it's too big for a big attacker to do, and I said, well, you know, maybe if you're a small attacker, the big miners might just join you because they realize what's going to happen, and it's it's an eventuality that cannot be stopped. Uh, well, you don't even have to attack Bitcoin first to begin with. There's a lot of small cap cryptocurrencies that have adopted SegWit. One is Grossel Coin, another is Vert Coin. So you can start mining. You can do this attack first on those as a proof of concept. Just prove it works, and then just keep moving up to bigger and bigger coins. Because, like I said, you make exponentially more profit if you do this attack and so you can just attack and kill each one of these small coins and you can build up a development team to you know build up a version of Grossel coin that's just like Grossel coin just without SegWit or just like you know vert coin without SegWit and then go on to you know things like Litecoin um, and I'm not sure all the coins that have SegWit activated but you can just keep moving up to this from the smaller market cap coins to the higher market cap coins and nobody can really stop you unless they try and centralize the network okay and so this is you know it's sort of terrifying to me. Um, other thing to remember though too is if you do ho hold SegWit coins it's pretty obvious when this is going to happen. One of the issues is though is like once this attack happens uh, if the mining cartel gets 51% control over the hash rate you can't transact in that currency anymore because then they can steal from you. But if you see like if a, mi if a mining cartel forms and tries to do this selfish mining attack on your coin you need to get out as quickly as possible because once they hit that 51% uh, hash rate, then they can steal all those coins. Um, however, before they hit that 51% hash rate, you can still transact uh, safely in that currency. Um, so if this attack happens on any SegWit coin, you know, you should get out as quickly as possible. But as of right now, uh, you're probably somewhat safe doing it. Um, this is more something that can happen in the long term. Um, but again, if you have like hostile governments, like let's say China and the U.S. get in a war and maybe the U.S. owns more Bitcoin than China does, Bitcoin SegWit, maybe Bitcoin Cash was more adopted by China, they can use this attack on, the, you know, in order to cripple the U.S. It's, there's a lot of weird, weird things that could happen. You know, there's a lot of big actors in the world with a lot of money and power that could easily do this attack and they could do it just to crush their enemies, you know. But it, it's just sort of, it's a little bit terrifying for me that, uh, you know, the Developers for Bitcoin would allow such a potent attack against their network, and again, there's nothing, there's literally nothing you can do to stop it. One more uh, thing that other people might say that you could do to stop it is they could say, "Oh yeah, but we'll just fork the network." But you got to remember, unless you change the mining protocol, uh, if you fork the network, the 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 selfish miner still exists so he can just start mining on the new fork and he can keep on mining on the new fork and ruin fork after fork after fork until all the forks of your coin are worth zero so this is kind of a terrifying thing and nobody really talks about it um, there's a real great video by Peter Risen on this issue uh, I would you know, I'd recommend you all watch it. But anyways, I just wanted to bring this out there because uh, it's a huge issue. And the SegWit supporters, like I said, people who support SegWit don't really understand cryptocurrencies. And the thing that uh, defines a cryptocurrency is the security of its mining protocol. And there is no security to the mining protocol of SegWit coins because the most profitable way to mine them is uh, to steal other people's coins, to forge transactions. But anyways, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Uh, there will be more coming out soon.